Hey, my name is Adam Capone. I've worked as an environment artist for 15 years, most recently at Ubisoft Halifax in Canada. These videos are not full material walkthroughs, but instead they focus on key techniques to help achieve stylized materials in Substance Designer. Together, we'll explore concrete tiles, wood, metal, and grass materials that illustrate techniques you can use on any stylized material. Techniques include stylized edgeware, gradient maps, lighting, brush-based surfaces, and more. To me, stylized means to distort or simplify reality. With photorealistic, the goal is to perfectly capture the look of the world around us. When it comes to stylized materials, we don't have such a common goal. The range is huge. A stylized material can be anything from a cartoonish reality to a material that looks like it has been made completely with ink. When it comes to stylized materials, I generally aim to recreate something similar to these materials. Here, I'm attempting to recreate a style that became popular in the 90s, seen in games from Blizzard Entertainment. You would traditionally use paint programs such as Photoshop with custom brushes. These texture maps were known as hand-painted textures. To make up for rendering limitations such as the lack of realistic lighting, they would actually paint these highlights and shadows into their maps. So yeah, for this wall piece, the sun would be coming down, which is why I added these highlights on the top of the shapes. And I also included the shadowing as well in the actual albedo. Back then, these highlights and shadows would have been more exaggerated, but now with PBR, we shouldn't add these into our photorealistic materials. For stylized materials, however, I like to add shadows and highlights to help push shapes and draw the eye. That era of hand-painted textures often featured underlying surfaces that looked brushed. By fading this surface, it helps other more interesting details pop. This material here showcases another key rule of stylized materials that I like to refer to as fewer and larger. This is some fan art I created based on a popular Ubisoft IP. In the original game, these barricades had multiple small bolts and more wood slats. In my fan art stylized substances, I made fewer and larger bolts and slats. In this next material, I did the same with the reinforcement piece. Fewer brackets and slats, but larger. My stylized materials have a smaller range of colors compared to photoreal materials, so the choice of specific colors are really important. When I need strong complementary colors, using a color wheel can really help. You can copy and paste the color value back and forth from the designer using a color wheel such as this free one from Canva. Something like this apartment material might be a good place to start if new to stylized materials. It's restrained from adding complexities such as grunge and dirt. The surface consists of overlapping squares with luminosity, that's all there is to it. Creating a material like this forces you to improve on essentials such as composition and color values. This sci-fi panel is on the other side of the spectrum. There are much more details here, yet it remains stylized. This is down to the high saturation of the colors, the clear uses of gradients, and the use of larger and fewer details. To be honest, multiple years into creating many stylized substances, and I've still not quite defined my style, mainly because I'm still having fun experimenting with different ideas, and I'm continuing to learn new techniques. In the following four videos, I'll cover a range of these techniques. Each material shown will come with a SPS file that can be further explored. My custom high preview node you can see me use in these videos is also available should you need it. I hope you find something useful in these videos that you can work into your style and workflow. So when you're ready, we'll move on to concrete tiles.